the powers that be through media, through TikTok, they don't want us to think and connect dots. So can you just point out, for example, how causing something like Pearl Harbor 9-11, how does that end up to someone making a shit ton of money? We have no great war, no great depression. Our great war is a spiritual war. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think I wrote any, I didn't write any particular questions because I just watched it last night. But I mean, for, for people don't know what it is it's basically this uh exploration of what happened with 9-11 and it explores what is the federal reserve and fractional reserve banking and um how war is basically a gigantic business what are your thoughts on government conspiracies or i guess like the government behind the government conspiracies you know the federal reserve um and the control that's happening from the man behind the curtain. Uh, I I guess just starting in general, and then we can kind of go more into individual uh, spaces. Yeah. So (laughs) this is a, you know, a very long conversation, which is kind of rabbit hole. I've, I've added to my uh, knowledge over the years and it all begins when you realize that the media, I guess, is not actually telling you the whole truth as a kid you think that oh i'm just um you know the news is telling us what's happened today and and that guy's wearing a suit so we should trust him yeah yeah you know he looks official he's speaking in this you know serious way and um you know he's just a good guy and wants to inform us and then you realize that the all of the news companies are owned by the same publishing companies and they give out the general headlines that they want all of the different news companies to focus on. And then who owns these publishing companies back in the day, it was, you know, families like the Rockefellers. They're still, you know, one of the biggest owners of these media companies. And they are obviously going to want to promote a narrative that, um, helps them helps their various financial interests and on one side you can think of that as the reason for all of this is like okay companies exist and uh they obviously want to maximize their own personal profits so they're going to try and promote the narrative and make the key decisions that are going to make people make them more money and that's the very that's a reduction of it um but what you what ends up happening is you get a very what's the word this perspective this slice which ignores a whole bunch of other stuff and eventually is going to lead to you know your health your sovereignty and um all the rest of it being sacrificed for their profit and that's what you got to realize now with zeitgeist the whole thing goes into the federal reserve system how that is controlled by you know a small group of international bankers uh, and they will create literally global uh, events, global negative events to enrich themselves. They were behind starting World War II, World War I. Um, the same people will sell weapons to both sides uh, in order to profit. And they don't care that they you know, will kill thousands, millions of people to do so. They just make money. Uh, so um they they create these false flag events such as the attack on pearl harbor was set up um gulf of tonkin incident all of these things which then get used and they'll create these events that will scare people that'll make people feel enraged feel like they need to defend uh their country and so on and so forth and that is used as the pretext to then go to war which then enables them to make shitload of money off selling the arms, selling the weapons still happening today. The Iraq war. Oh yeah. The invasion of, um, they've got nuclear bombs never did, but if they can use the media to say that to justify their invasion, then they get, you know, billions and billions of dollars. Usually. So let's, let's connect the dots for people to really understand. Cause it took me a moment to understand right. this. Um, which is another, I think, really good part that that movie pointed out is, you know, the the powers that be through media, through TikTok, through, you know, different psychological operations. They don't want us to think and connect dots. So, so can you just point out, for example, how 
um, how how causing something like Pearl Harbor, uh, 9-11, how does that end up to someone making a shit ton of money? Right. So let's say any anything that you can use to justify a war, um, Pearl Harbor being the main pretext uh, for that war, uh, if they can say this is the first event that uh, Japan has invaded Americans on American soil, and then most people, well, it, I, I think it ends up being like still a very small fraction of people, but more people than in general would think, okay, now we have to defend ourselves. Let's go overseas and attack Japan. Um, let's get the U.S. involved with these things. Once the U.S. is involved, then you mobilize the government coffers, the government money to eventually you have to, you know, pay for weapons, pay for artillery, pay for ammunition. And where does that come from? Um, well, you have to borrow the funds from these international banks. You say, Hey, we need to go to war. Um, can we have X millions of dollars and we'll pay you back this amount, which we will end up taxing from, uh, you know, the people in our countries uh, and so on and so forth. And the international bankers will do that to both sides. Um, so that's how they make their money. There's interest. They, you know, the other mechanism of control that the financial system implements on people is this idea of debt, uh, of charging interest. And basically that's money upon money upon money, which doesn't exist, never existed. It's just numbers on a hard drive somewhere. And that's pretty much our entire financial system right now is just numbers on a hard drive. Um, if you really think about it. So Debt is just creating this amount of money. It's like, I'll give you this money and then you need to get this, give me more money back for what, you know? Um, some people think that, oh, it's just the cost of paying a loan. But what it is, is, is why they implement student debt as the only kind of debt that is non-dischargeable. You can't get rid of it. Every other debt, you can file bankruptcy and get rid of it. But if they can convince young Americans, young people all over the world to go into debt, to fund these student loans, which have ridiculous interest, which you can never get rid of. You basically have this drain on your financials, your entire life, which is what most people are realizing. And so you're a slave, you're a slave. You're working to pay this back to the colleges, which have billions of dollars worth of endowment funds. And it's a system of control and they're not creating any, you know, goods or services, which is like adding value to the world, to the economy. It's just this fake debt cycle uh and that didn't used to exist you know jesus cast the money lenders from the temple because it was seen as a inherently anti-religious horrible thing to do to people and i believe in islam they have similar rules against money lending um because it's not it's just this very like parasitic way to um control people and so that is probably the main mechanism that a lot of people um are unfortunately bought into you know ourselves included on on some level by just how we are you know part of this society and that is part of the benefit of making your own money in a way that you don't have to do what any anyone else tells you whereas as we've seen in previous times if if the job that you have that you need to keep paying your debts is requiring requiring you to get this medical technology this experimental injection then you have no choice really. But if you own your own business and they say you have to get this and you'd be like, no, I don't. <laughs> I am still going to make money without it. Then they don't have that level of control over you. What they want to do, what the, the grand overarching vision for, uh, let's say this global people that are organizing behind the scenes is to get everyone uh, microchipped in a way and linked to this electronic debt global dollar system and universal currency. And so if that, like you see this with how often do people use cash these days? It's this slow grind of things away from physical reality and into, oh, just tap. It's just electronic. It's beep, beep, beep. And then you, you <coughs> nothing can happen without the government's involvement. And they can also shut you off. This is why electric cars are so bad as well, because they require, <coughs> excuse me, 
they require an internet connection to turn on the car in, in some cases, or because there is an internet connection that is, yeah, it's downloading and software updates, then there exists the capacity for you to be shut off, to be for your car to be turned off. Beep, boop, boop, sorry, not turning on today because the government has uh, pretty much said that you're an enemy of the state and now you, you, know, you believe in traditional men and women and so you're a fucking Nazi and now you're, you can't drive to wherever you want to go to anymore. That, that's why they want to phase out normal cars is because the car is a symbol of freedom and you can go wherever you want with it. All it requires is petrol and um, you know, a, a, a fucking battery and then you're good to go. But electric cars don't like that. They're relying on the power grid. Um, there's, it's just the same. You can kind of see this in everything, in all of this slow encroachment on freedom where everything is being moved to electronic tracking um, you have to buy into this system in order to participate in society. And if you don't, you're a piece of shit. And um, what it does is just means that <clears throat> we're going to have less uh, freedom and these people that just want to more, more, more control, more, more, more money uh, will, that's what they want to do with everything. And this has been happening for, you know, a hundred years. So we're, we're at the tail end of it and it's kind of coming to a cusp now. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of in turbulence. This is kind of like you have to see the benefit in it is that more people are waking up to where like our boomer parents, even though stuff was going on then, like false flags. Now we know it's happening because we can share information online and in real time. You guys can listen to this podcast and investigate these things where, you know, specifically 9-11, um, you had two planes fly into two buildings and three buildings completely collapsed like they do in controlled demolition. Why did the third building collapse? Oh, there was a fire on two levels and then it just collapsed. No, it doesn't happen. Even um, buildings that, you know, are entirely ablaze, they don't just collapse like as if someone had planned it. So then the September 11 attacks were either orchestrated or allowed to happen uh, by the government in order to generate mass fear, justify the war and terror, get you to take your shoes off of the the airports, uh, and then provide a pretext. It's this whole problem, reaction, solution. The problem is being 9-11. Reaction is, you know, it's a... We need to have a war. We need to have a war. We need to have less rights in order to capture the terrorists in our own land. Um, your civil liberties decreased, your privacy, privacy decreased, uh, and then there's obviously economic gain. People like Larry Silverstein, I shared a video... Uh, on Twitter that I saw where I think it was like three months before the 9-11 attacks, he was sold the World Trade Centers um, for $14 million. And then he took out the most exorbitant terrorist insurance policies he could find three months before 9-11. He took out these policies on the World Trade Center and then he made something like $1.4 billion to collect that. So... Either that's the greatest coincidence of all time uh, or something was kind of something was going on. And he was just by chance not in New York on that day when he usually does work there in the financial services areas. So there's a lot of uh, examples like that of government, uh, government officials making trades before on airlines before that happened and just little things like that where it's like, if it stinks that much, then there's obviously something going on. And you can look back at pretty much most of these events where another one is like the, the whole school shooting uh, system. There's like the, um, what was the other one? The Las Vegas shooting as well. Just so many aspects to these events, which don't logically make sense, like could only have happened where with someone else helping him, abiding him. And the narrative from the media again is always oh, legal citizens need less guns. That's always what it comes down to is you need less capacity to defend yourself. And why would they need that? Why would they want that? Because America uniquely has, thank God, you know, this, this massive culture of being armed in the citizen. And that was one of the great things that the founding fathers did um, to the point where you cannot lock down America like you can Australia or these other countries where Australia has already fallen for, you know, Port Arthur 
uh, massacre where everyone gave up their guns instantly. Like, I don't know whether that was a real thing or not. I'm not saying either way, but the result of that was, okay, all the Australian citizens need to give up their guns now because guns are bad. It's like, no, that's not... I don't have to... I shouldn't have to give up my rights because someone else did something bad. That doesn't make sense at all. And that now there's no guns in Australia, really, unless you're a farmer and need it for work. So... America doesn't have that, which make, means it's very hard for people to control the same way that European countries are controlled. And, you know, this whole narrative of school shootings and other things, it's like the end result is they want to take your guns because when they try to enforce this global control system, uh, they need a monopoly on um, force in order to scare you, in order to do what they want. And if they don't have that monopoly on force because the populace is armed, they can't do that. You always see that with communist dictators. The first thing that they do when they get into power is a, a gun buyback or a gun purchase or you know, surrender your guns kind of movement. And then he starts to get really fucking bad and, and you know, make these decisions with rounding people up in camps. Um, so yeah, that's like the zoomed out perspective of how I see everything going in this way. And it's, it's, it's really should be motivation more so than it is, you know, to get worried about it and scared about it. Motivation to be as dangerous as possible, be as financially um, strong as possible, independent as possible, and to make communities and to make sure that you're aware of what's going on so that, you know, when shit really does hit the fan, you're not just stuck there unknowing like everyone else will be. So I'm making a thing because I'm actually trying to help everyone understand this and honestly help myself understand it. Um, I love Figma. They just got sold for apparently like $20 billion. Um, Never heard of them before that. Yeah, crazy. I've been using them for a while. But okay, so we have um, we have an event. Take nine eleven. We can talk about the pandemic later. <laughs> After that event, someone <laughs> says this is an act of war, which leads to less rights uh, to capture terrorists in their own land. Mm-hmm. And then we need to build and buy weapons for war, but we don't have money. So in order to fund that. You need to get a loan from an international <laughs> bank for nine bajillion dollars. Yeah. And then this is a part I need help understanding. Mm-hmm. To pay back the loan, we tax our own people in our country with interest. So where is the profit made and who are the people that are profiting? The international bank. They get this bank. paid back the money with interest. Yeah. Ah, this bank. Got it. Yeah. So the countries will pay back money to the international banks um with interest okay so and also get control right like it's yeah. not just the money it's the you owe us nine billion dollars you have to put through this bill which will mean our pharmaceutical companies will be much more profitable xyz can ask for favors yeah so the bankers are yeah. the bad guys because yeah. they so they allegedly plan these events Mm-hmm. And then that leads to some kind of constriction of rights. You can't leave your house. You have to get this in your arm. X, yeah. Y, Z. Cash, okay, we need to... No cash. To, can't travel. Yeah, we need, whatever. Yeah. And then it's, we need... It's really, we need X, right? Yeah. Uh, but so don't this is an important money. one, is the most recent pandemic is what, a war on an invisible enemy. Yeah. It's a war on something that you can't see. I hope you're enjoying this channel and these videos. If you like them, you can subscribe right here. There's a whole playlist about how to build a social circle from scratch right here with really high quality content. And then right here, you can learn about how I help men in Tribe Accelerator build a circle from scratch of high value men and women.